Okay, good to see everybody. Appreciate you guys coming. Uh, just finishing up the, uh, wrapping up the game in terms of our evaluations and things like that, and we'll put our teaching tapes together for tomorrow. Uh, at the same time, getting ready for the Giants and ramping that up and having uh, start our installs tomorrow as well. So uh, we're happy with where we're at. Very uh, important and valuable divisional win last night. Exciting. Stadium was rocking. Our, our guys played a good game. It's pretty much what we thought after watching the tape when we talked last night. It wasn't too much different uh, in terms of what we thought we saw and what we saw. And so now we're moving forward and getting ready for a very good New York Giants team that's on a roll. So what questions do you have? John, you mentioned uh, last night about Marcus Williams missing a significant amount of time. Uh, is the plan for him to go on IR, and do you know of any kind of a, a, a timetable when he come back? Yeah, he'll go on IR, and then the timetable will kind of be based on what the IR number is. So I don't really want to get into the dates and times and stuff like that, but it'll be a significant amount of time. It won't be a season ender, though. John, what did you see out of Geno Stone stepping in there, and what are you looking from him and Kyle Hamilton moving forward, knowing you're not going to have so long? Yeah, I mean, those guys are practicing every day. They're both, they both played well last night. I uh, expect those guys to continue to grow and, uh, and to play well. Uh, both have their own styles, you know. And I think they're going to both play well for us, but they both got to step up and do a great job. And of course, uh, you know, Chuck as well. And uh, we, we move a lot of guys in and out of that safety nickel spot. So we'll be moving guys around in there a lot. So I'm looking forward to all those guys kind of as a, as a team, as a group, uh, kind of filling in for Marcus and, uh, and not losing a step on that. Coach, Greg Brown has been creative getting Devin Duvernay the ball as far as that sweep, catching the ball in traffic. What have you seen with Devin, how he's, how he's mature as a player in his third year? Yeah, you know, Todd, it's, I'm exactly right. He's just kind of taking steps every week, it almost seems like still. You know, he's just, uh, in terms of uh, impacting games, you know, that's probably the difference. He's really impacting games now in, in a big way with the return game in the past, but now he's still doing the return game. But uh, in the passing game, he's just coming up with plays and, and running the ball and some of our read option stuff. You know, he's a guy who's, uh, you know, part of the read and sometimes he gets it and sometimes he doesn't. Then he's in the passing game. He's moving around, motioning. Just doing a lot of great stuff for us. John, was Marcus Williams hurt on the screen pass? I don't know exactly which play it was, but it was a, it was a, I think it's the first or second series because I just remember uh, being on the sideline and it was really bothering him early in the game, and he gutted it out. I don't think he didn't really say too much about it, so I don't think anybody realized how serious it was until they got inside and took a look at it. John, Kalea said that the players didn't watch much of the, the Bengals footage from last year, the two games you guys played them. Did you guys watch, and how much, how, how much stock do you put into that, knowing that you have a different team this year, full of guys that weren't able to play last year? Uh, yeah, we well, look at the X's and O's part of it. That's a big part of it, you know, in terms of how they attack the structure of what we're doing and what they're doing. But, but beyond that, we didn't think too much of it. I mean, I never mentioned it during the week. It wasn't something that we talked about. Uh, it's a different year, different teams. John, uh, two weeks ago, Brandon Stevens played almost every snap in the slot, and Pepe Williams didn't play a snap on defense. And last night, Pepe played a lot. Was Stevens hurt, or was that just a personnel decision? No, we're just trying to roll guys in there and give people an opportunity to play and, you know, give all our guys a chance to contribute. And I think we got a lot of good options back there, you know, and some young guys who are developing and growing. So if they can share the load a little bit, that's good for all of us. John, going back to the safeties for, for a minute, um, would you say that Gino's style is more like Marcus's style as opposed to Kyle, or is it not that simple? I don't even, I can't even think that way. It doesn't matter. I mean, Gino's Gino, Kyle's Kyle, Marcus is Marcus. They have their strengths, you know, and we'll try to put them in position to, you know, make the most of their strengths if we can. Hey, Coach, uh, yesterday Joe Goro asked, uh, he had the fewest air yards per 10, and uh, for the rate is lowest blitz, like 2.7%. Looking to week six, is this the most comfortable you feel in defense as of right now? Uh, well, we played the best statistically of this season so far, I guess. So I, from a comfortable standpoint, I like that a lot better. You know, I think our guys will feel better about that. Every game's different. You know, every team is different. This is a team that we kind of just chose to, 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 to attack the way we did. You know, we played a lot of zone coverage, a lot of split safety zone, a lot of disguises. And, um, you know, we didn't want to give up anything deep, you know, and make them throw short and then go rally and try to tackle. And they made some yards. You know, they were throwing the ball in the flares and the, and the wide screens and they're running the ball a little bit here and there and, and uh, moving the ball down the field. But it took them a while to do it. 
And that was the plan, basically. So uh, next week will be a different week and a different plan. John, especially early in the game, how, you know, I guess setting the tone with Marcus Peters is tackling and he made two plays there to stop them from the first down. I want you to feel like he kind of set his tone with the energy and just this physicality he played with early in the game. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the tackle on the screen, I think, was really good. And uh, he made a couple plays. Uh, you know, he had some good coverage plays. Yeah, Marcus Marcus is always into it. And, uh, you know, the energy's high. And uh, he's one of our leaders. Uh, did you know it, excuse me, Did you know that you'd be able to get as many snaps out of him as you did considering you know, his limitations in practice last week? We were happy with the number of snaps, yeah. You know, he had, uh, he had, uh, he was kind of slowed down by a muscle thing. And uh, to get out there and do, do as well as he did was good. You know, I know he's on the bike in there, back there behind, keeping that thing warm the whole game. So, yeah, really, uh, uh, we have a Purple Heart Award. Uh, he's in, he's been nominated for it, you know, we have, for the guys that, you know, fight through an injury and play. So, uh, he'll be in consideration for that, for doing that. John, how impressed have you been with uh, Jason Pierre Paul to already make an impact? Last two games, and especially last night. Say again, please. Um, how, how impressed have you been with Jason Pierre Paul for making such an impact in last night's game? Yeah, very impressed. I mean, you know, he hadn't played at all in training camp or in the season. Uh, you know, I thought he looked good the first week, and now just a little bit better this week. But to get his hands on those balls and the pressure of the quarterback, strong against the run, you know, he plays super hard. He's a hard playing guy. Just you can tell he loves the game. So yeah, he's a he's a big plus for us. I'm I'm very happy that we have him. And do you feel like on the outside linebacker, uh, outside linebacker group all all year you've dealt with injuries there? You've kind of been juggling guys with practice squad elevations. Do you feel like that group is close to becoming whole again with Bowser working his way back, Ajabu's in the picture, um, Jason Peter Paul is getting better? I hope so. You know, I mean, that's what we're waiting for. There's no doubt. Um, we're, we're trying to get there for sure. John, after watching the film, how, what did you see from Ronnie Stanley and his outlet last night? He played well, yeah. Ronnie played well, and um, you know, so did Pat. You know, they, both those guys are going against Hendrickson. He's a really good player out there and high motor guy. And uh, I wouldn't say we completely win, wipe him out of the game or anything like that, but <clears throat> we definitely uh, he didn't he didn't he didn't a stretch. So I thought those guys did a really good job. Ronnie, Ronnie was Ronnie, you know, and uh, to see that and he felt good afterwards. He was strong. Uh, solid. He anchored really well. That was important with the ankle to see that. We thought he was going to do that because he didn't practice. So uh, big step, big step in the right direction for Ronnie. So follow up, do you anticipate the alternating series? Do you anticipate that kind of being a thing going forward? Or? Yeah, I'm just, you know, listen to what the, the doctors and, and the trainer and what Ronnie says. You know, it's really up to those guys. It's between Ronnie and the trainers to tell us what the what the deal is and we'll, we'll adhere to it and and built the game plan accordingly. We talked a little bit last night about the defending Philly special play that they were going to go line. And also, it looked like you guys had the, the shovel pass that they were trying to do for the bottom up as well. What is the key, I guess? What are the key principles to defending both of those? Uh, well, you know, the, uh, the, the coverage that we're in down there in the low red zone for the Philly special was the coverage that passes off routes. and. Um, Marcus was able to pass off his route and kind of became a free player and just responded, just responded to what he saw and, and ended up being the edge player over there. And, and uh, you know, as that, as that chase came around there, he was, he was the threat to the edge and Marcus took it, you know, just didn't hesitate, made a great play. The other one, we work on the shovel pass a lot. It's a, it's a play that we run to and that's one that's pretty defined, you know, techniques when you recognize the blocking scheme involved there and I just think our guys did a great job. Marcus was one of the guys on that one too, if you remember, because he was in man coverage there. So um, yeah, both those plays were really well played. The other uh, one, I think, I think Adafi was the other guy involved in that. He did a great job because he was the end. Sorry, uh, John. Uh, on that really special uh, defense, um, you know, haven't seen all 22, but it looks like Gino did a pretty good job of maybe pointing Mark Spears and you know, trading off that stuff before the snap. Is, did that jive with what you saw uh, on that play? Yeah, yeah, I'm not really sure about you know the communication as far as what they said. Haven't haven't really just looked at the tape. You know, I haven't really talked to him about it. But I'll say this about Gino. If this is kind of what you're saying, he he's he's really good at that stuff. I mean, Gino came in, really wasn't in you know wasn't expected to play in the game on defense, but he always knows the game plan. He always knows the checks. He always practices well, and he's always prepared. And that's one of his best strengths. So I wouldn't be surprised if what you're talking about is, is not exactly what happened. Mitch, what did you see 
You see from Patrick Queen in coverage, you know, with you guys playing with two high safeties and then checking down a lot, it was a lot on his plate to kind of rally to the ball and in and, and coverage. What did you see from him besides just the interception? Yeah, I just thought he was really disciplined in terms of his being in the right spots. There's different types of split safety coverage, you know, in terms of who has what. And, and so different times he's in the flat, other times he's back there in that hook area. Uh, sometimes you got to be a little deeper on play action. There's different things. I thought he just managed all that stuff really well and just kind of in the right spots pretty much the entire right. day. And on that one, obviously, in exactly the right spot to make that play. John, have you, have you heard yet whether Bateman and Justin Houston might be able to come back this week? Uh, who's the first person? Sorry, Bateman and Justin Houston. Uh, yeah, I'd say they might be able to come back. You know, it's just Monday. We'll just have to see. I'm, again, I, I'd like to see him back. You know. Hey, Coach, uh, a lot of they talk about Justin Tucker, of course, the, you know, the moment for the, even the win to the team, but how about Jordan Stout? You know, have a, the first time as a, as a rookie had this moment uh, to share with Justin Tucker. Yeah, that was a, you know, I, didn't Tuck say something last night about the game-winning hold? You know, that's pretty cool. So uh, it was. It was a game-winning hold. You know, I, I think to your point, he was pretty excited about it. I, I think I saw a clip where he was celebrating with Tuck and screaming and yelling, right? And, uh, you know, he takes it seriously. He's not just a punter. He's that, that punting role, you know, is, is, has more to it than just punting the ball, which is obviously a big role. But... He's into it, man. He doesn't want to let Justin down or the team down. So he had a good night, and he punted well, too. So it was a good night for him. John, uh, apologies if this was answered uh, yesterday, but uh, what went into the fourth down decision to uh, go for the field goal instead of uh, going for it on fourth down? Well, we, we put the offense out there. You know, the offense was out there. It's not like we just ran the field goal team out and kicked it. So we had a, we had a plan, and uh, we followed through on the plan, you know, and it turned out to be a delay game, and it was the best thing to do to kick a field goal based on a lot of things that happened in those situations. So it was really more of a football deal than it was a strategic de decision. Could have gone either way. Um, turned out to be the right thing, right? So that's good. Um, but that's kind of how those things go. So I, I felt like it was sometimes you want to go for it. I, I, I say this a lot. You know, it, it comes down to whether you think you're going to get it or not. So you can do some things strategically to give yourself the best chance to get it. And if you don't have the best chance to get it, you, you don't go for it. You kick it. And sometimes it's better to line up and find out as opposed to guess, you know, before you send a play out there. How much of the clock factor in there? I mean, they even had a very long drive, and you still had two minutes and three timeouts. Oh. At the point, because there was so much time when we went right. for it. Right. Yeah. I mean, even with the long touchdown drive, you still got the ball back. Well, that's right. I mean, it was. It, I didn't know that they were going to take that much time off the clock. So there was. We weren't just looking at like one or two possessions. It wasn't like like the week before. You're looking at a minute. You know, now we're looking at how many possessions. There's a possibility there's going to be two, three, four more possessions there. So there's going to be more points scored. So, it, you know, it did feel like, you know, I think this is kind of how we approached the whole game. It felt like every point was going to count. And then it didn't, it didn't turn out to be a real high-scoring game. So, you know, three points really mattered. You know, so we kind of, you know, I was leaning toward getting as many points as we could in that particular game. So that's just how we did it. What goes into in the, the final, like, was it 30 seconds? You got the first down, and the decision of, okay, let's not, you know, we're okay with 43 yards where you could, you know, possibly just run a couple more plays, get a little closer. What goes into that decision? I think that's a really great point. And I, we had that conversation, you know, of course, you know, Randy wants more yards, which I appreciate, and I always want more yards too. But at that point in time, I just felt like, and it was just a gut call at the time just to say, no, nah, we're going to take it right here and kick it because. There's also risks in that, and the risks are that you get, you, you know, you turn the ball over, which I don't think we'd have done because our guys were doing a good job with the ball handling and holding on to the ball. But the risk of a penalty is pretty significant right there. So rather than, you know, put it in the hands of the officials, sometimes you just says put it in the hands of Tucker. And I, that was kind of the choice that, that I made in that moment. John, with the fourth down calls, it looked like a couple times last night, especially in the fourth and short uh, situations, it looked like Lamar wanted to stay on the field a couple of times. How, how much do you weigh in the players wanting to stay out there as opposed to, you know, whatever coaching decision you have in mind? Yeah, the only one I can think of is the one that we, well, we put the, we, we, we called a play in the last one that you just asked me about, and then the other one was the one we went for, right, that, that we didn't get. So I know we wanted to stay out there for that one. Um, yeah, I mean, you think about it. It's part of it. You know, how confident are they? How confident is Greg in the play call? 
you know, how confident am I in the play calls that we have? I mean, what's it look like? You know, how are we moving the ball? How are we blocking them? How good is the defense? You know, do they look tired or do they look strong? You know, do we have a play? We have answers for pressure uh, or for coverage, you know, for something they might get us. They'll, they'll just there's a lot of factors that go into it. In that situation we just talked about where you guys get up to the line on fourth down and you have a plan, but you ultimately take the delay. Is it your call from the sideline to take the delay? Who, who, who makes that final choice? No, no, that's all built into the play. Oh, okay. Yeah, those things are built into the play. John, it was so early in the Giants meet, but from Saquon Barkley, what you've seen on tape, uh, now what kind of stress can you put on your defense? Yeah, Cliff, I mean, that's right. I mean, he, you know, he's uh, – he looks good to me. I've wa I watched a few games last week and uh, getting ready to go back up after we get finished and get on those guys more. But strength, balance, change of direction, just a really tough guy to tackle. Good out of the backfield, catches passes, you know, good all around, great all around running back. Uh, you know, kind of a heart and soul of their offense, but it's just not him. I mean, Daniel Jones is playing really well and he's a tough tackle. I mean, he, he's, been, he's been making plays out of the pocket. Like, I didn't really expect to see and uh, he's, he's really made a big difference for him, throwing and running around. Uh, offensive line's playing well. Ben Bredesen, who was here, you know, he's doing a nice job for him. So um, they got, they have a, they're doing a good job on offense, obviously, and winning games. John, after uh, rewatching that final drive, uh, what did Lamar you know, show you from start to finish, you know, taking the ball from you know, using your territory to get into field goal range, just kind of Looked like taking his back again. Yeah, I mean, he did. He, uh, you know, I mean, he said it last night. We were all sitting in there at the press conference, you know, and he wasn't real thrilled with some of the some of the game the way the game went for him because he's he's a perfectionist, and I think he feels like he left some he left some uh, he left some some things out there that some plays that could have been made, uh, and yet doesn't get flustered by it. Just says, let's find a way to win the game. You know, and that's what he said last night. So. I mean, there was some pretty darn good blocking going on in some of those runs, and they were, they were designed quarterback runs that he read really well, and he ran well, and they were blocked well, just really well executed by everybody. And to have that threat, I mean, to, to have Lamar, who's willing to do it and able to do it, uh, that's, a, that's a tough run game to stop, you know, especially in a situation like that where they've got to get off the field. So kind of credit to everybody, but sure, it starts with Lamar, and he made it happen. John, um, Dobbins actually played fewer snaps this week than he had previously. Is that just a function of how the game was going, matchup, something you liked, didn't like? Yeah, it just works out. No, nothing we didn't like. I thought, I thought he had his best game. You know, he looked to me, uh, told me after the game, the best, you know, he's, he's getting better every week. And I thought he, he took a jump last week in practice and this week in the game. I mean, the one run for the first down to the left side was, was spectacular. You know, that was, he was hitting the backfield, right? Ended up getting the first down, what, eight or nine yard first down? Broke about five tackles. So, yeah, I just can't read too much into that. I mean, you start looking into who gets how many carries, who gets how many snaps. That's not really in our thought process. We're not saying, oh, this guy's got to get so many carries. If he doesn't, you know, something's wrong. You know, you play guys in situations. Guys get a little bit tired. Some guys do certain things better. You want them out there for certain things. You know, it's, we, got, we got three backs up, you know. They, you know. They're all good players. So you want to use them all to some degree as much as you can. None of those guys are really special teams guys. They're not up to play special teams. So... Um, yeah, I think it was, you know, you try to win the game with the guys you have and, uh, and where you're at that place in time. I mean, J.K., is just, he's going to have a great future. You know, he's a, he's a star. He's going to be a star. So take it one game at a time. All right. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.